Welcome to uh, EHJ Today. I'm uh, William Wines from uh, Belgium. Joining are Anders Jepsen from uh, Salgreska University Hospital in Göteborg and uh, Rob Storey, Professor of Cardiology at uh, Sheffield University. Anders, you reported on this uh, interesting study on cabbage-related bleeding. Tell us a bit about uh, the study. Why did you um, launch this effort? Well, uh, bleeding complication is this still a major problem in cardiac surgery. About 15% of the patients bleed too much. And we knew from before that patients on clopidogrel, the first generation PY12 inhibitor, have an increased risk of bleeding. And then was the new P2Y12 inhibitors launched, and then we wanted to see uh, if uh, this is the same pattern in this group of patients. It's well known that ticagrelor have, gives a higher uh, platelet inhibition than clopidogrel, but it's also shorter offset and onset time, so it's not, cl not uh, uh, clear that we can um, use the data from the clopidogrel patients. Mm -hmm. So, uh, what was the design? How did you perform the study? This is an observational study in all patients on dual antiplatelet therapy at eight Swedish uh, cardiothoracic centers operated 2012 and 2013. During this time, Ticagra was introduced as the first light treatment for patients, for ACS patients in Sweden. So we used this situation to get at least uh, uh, decently uh, comparable groups. And then we uh, collected the data from the Sweetheart Registry and also from local registries and patients' records and uh, compared the incidence of bleeding complications with ticagrelor treated patients and with clopidogrel treated patients. And we also looked at the time from, of discontinuation before surgery. Sure. Today, in, in the current guidelines, both ticagrelor and clopidogrel should be stopped at least five days before non-acute surgery. Okay, so what were the main findings? Uh, the main findings, first, we did see less bleeding complications with ticagrelor than with clopidogrel, about a 25% reduction, both uh, unadjusted and also after we adjusted for all confounders, including time since discontinuation. And secondly, and maybe more important, at least in Sweden, because now most patients are receiving ticagrelor, was that the bleeding complication was not, there were not, not an increased bleeding complication rate if the, the uh, ticagrelor was stopped three days before surgery instead of five days, which is currently used in the guidelines. So if you had to summarize the recommendation, practical recommendation for the colleagues uh, in the community, what would be your main statement both for clopidogrel and um, ticagrelor? For, for ticagrelor patients, you should avoid to operate those patients within the first three days after. Uh, you had to stop three days before surgery with, with ticagrelor. And actually we saw an increased bleeding tendency with, with ticagrelor if, compared to clopidogrel if the medication was stopped less than 24 hours before surgery. Okay. But you should not wait five days. I think it's enough to wait three days and this will save both hospital resources and also reduce the risk of thrombotic events while waiting for surgery. Thank you Anders, that's a strong practical message. Now Robert, what is your take? How do you see the uh, conclusions on, of the study? Well I think the results of this uh, analysis are really consistent with the known offset of action and in the case of clopidogrel the variability in response to the treatment. So with clopidogrel we have what is very well characterized as a wide variability in response during treatment. That translates into a wide variability in terms of the recovery of normal platelet reactivity after clopidogrel is discontinued. So if you have a complete non-responder to clopidogrel, then you probably don't need to wait for going to surgery. But if you have someone who's a high responder, about 30% of patients are high responders to clopidogrel, they take about seven days to recover near normal platelet reactivity because of the need for platelets to be renewed in the circulation. <clears throat> so seeing higher incidence of serious bleeding complications in clopidogrel treated patients within a week of uh, discontinuation is, is not surprising uh, because of the known 
variability and offset of effect. With ticagrelor, it's very different because it's a reversibly binding drug and the recovery of platelet function relates to the fall in plasma levels. And with a half-life of uh, 8 to 12 hours of ticagrelor, we see very predictable recovery uh, in 72 hours following discontinuation of ticagrelor. There may be a little bit of effect still um, to wear off between three days and five days, and hence the uh, regulatory authorities recommending five days before cardiac surgery. Now, obviously this observational study has not randomized patients to discontinuing ticagrelor three days versus five days before surgery, so one has to be a little bit cautious, but I think one can be reassured that uh, for most patients, three days is going to be pretty safe uh, and you're not going to run into significant bleeding complications after discontinuation of ticagrelor. Perhaps you could argue that platelet function testing at three to five days after discontinuation of ticagrelor would just give you that extra bit of confidence and maybe even platelet function testing would allow you to take some patients at 48 hours after ticagrelor um, because there is a bit of variability in terms of recovery. So I think these data make a lot of sense and, um, and really reflect the differences in the pharmacology of thenopyridines such as clopidogrel on the one hand and a reversibly binding P2Y12 inhibitor like ticagrelor. With the caution that you mentioned uh, that perhaps platelet function testing would add um, extra information, do you think that the data are strong enough to be translated into practice or, or you use the word randomization. You think a randomized trial is needed? Well, I think the, the recommendation for platelet function testing, such as we made in the position paper on antiplatelet therapy and cardi cardiac surgery, is really based on expert consensus with a, a limited amount of observational data, uh, such as from the target cabbage study. Uh, you have to obviously use an assay that's reliable. Um, for example, the Verify Now P2Y12 assay is a very uh, reproducible and accurate way of determining the uh, effects of a P2Y12 inhibitor. So, so that would be a good means of uh, guiding the level of platelet inhibition and uh, based on limited amount of evidence would be a reasonable way of um, uh, proceeding with the uh, timing of surgery. But, uh, but I think a, a randomized study would be the purest way of really answering this question. Mm -hmm. Do we need it? Um, well, we always need, you know, good evidence for a guiding practice, um, but uh, I think obviously against that we have to make pragmatic decisions for our patients and, uh, uh, and clearly some patients, uh, as we see in this uh, observational study, uh, you know, are going early for surgery and, and really will want to make sure that patients are safe when they're going for surgery and so adding in platelet function testing is going to add value uh, to what is the current practice. Thank you. Anders, final comment? Now, we're also looking into platelet function testing and, and uh, there's just four studies out uh, touching, four observational studies out there yet. And I doubt that it will be possible to perform a, a randomized controlled trial because bleeding is not just depending on the P2Y12 inhibitors, it's bleeding on a number of other factors. Mm -hmm. So I think it, it will be difficult. Thank you very much, Anders and uh, Rob, for joining uh, EHJ today. We discussed a very interesting with trial on um, study on uh, cabbage-related uh, bleeding complications that uh, ends up with, um, I think, useful practical recommendations. And it's again another uh, great contribution from the Sweetheart uh, Registry Program. Thank you. <laughs>